How's it going everyone? Vlad here with SolusPLC.com and today we're going to go back to the basics. I'm going to be showing you how to connect to a PLC of which you don't have the program and you don't know the RS Links driver that needs to be added to the setup. So what I'm going to be doing is going in and pinging the PLC. I'm then going to be adding the driver and then creating a program by uploading what's currently running on the PLC. So this is a compact guard logics PLC that is usually sitting behind me in the studio. And what I'm going to be starting with is figuring out if my laptop is indeed connected to the PLC. So imagine the scenario is me going to a plant and being told that the IP address of this PLC is 192.168.1.33. My first step is going to be opening the command prompt and then launching the software. And from here, I can ping my PLC. So type in ping space 192.168. 168.1.33. If the PLC responds, you're going to receive four replies. If it doesn't respond, this means that you have a physical network problem or a configuration problem either on your laptop or the PLC side or the switch slash router. So what I would recommend, if you're not getting a response, you need to look at your connection. I would connect directly from your computer to the PLC if that is the case and try pinning it that way. If that's not working, either your card is incorrectly set up or the PLC has been given a different IP address. If I do receive the four replies, I can proceed with the configuration of RS links. Without closing the window, I can once again press on my Windows key or just start typing RS links. This is a software that is installed with any RS Logics and Studio 5000 tools, so RS Links Classic. Select the software, and here it's going to come up in a blank window without any configurations. I can press on this RS Who button to see all the drivers currently set up. And in my case, I've deleted the driver that we will be building in just a moment, but you should always have the default of your workstation set up on the Links Gateway. Now, in order to add a driver, we're going to select Communications, Configure Drivers, and here you're going to see a list of all the existing configured drivers, as well as a way to create a new one. So available driver types, I'm going to select this dropdown, and I'm going to select the driver that is appropriate for my connection. Most devices nowadays, of course, there's going to be an Ethernet port, but you also need to pay attention that there's going to be different setups for older PLCs. So on the Ethernet side, there's going to be Ethernet devices and then Ethernet IP driver. So let's explore Ethernet devices. We're going to add new. You'll notice that it will give me an opportunity to change the name. You can certainly leave the default one. But once again, this is up to your preference. Maybe put in an identifier for the specific plant or location you're in. Press on OK. And here I can add the IP address of the PLC that I want to communicate with. So 192. 168.1.33, press add new, press on apply, press on OK, and close out of this window. So you'll notice that there's going to be a second driver with the name that we've given it that's going to appear underneath the links gateways. We can close out of this and we can select IB underscore ETH dash one. If we expand this driver, you'll notice that there's currently nothing underneath, and that's because it takes a little bit of time for RS links to ping, ping these devices. And after a few moments, you'll notice that the PLC is going to appear underneath. So that's, as I mentioned, the 5069-L306 ERMS2 Compact Guard Logics PLC. We can expand this PLC and see if there's any cards. So if there are any backplane cards, they would be listed right here. Right now, it's just a PLC, so there's absolutely nothing in the slots. We can also right-click this PLC and then go into Device Properties, which will give us a little bit more information about the device. And what I'm looking for in particular is going to be this revision number. So notice that it's 32.013, which means that it's running and requesting for me to connect via Studio version 32. So I already have this version pre-installed, but if you're walking onto a PLC that you know you don't know the version of, you would need to double check the version before you launch the appropriate software. And so once again, we go back to type here to search and I can type in Studio 5000 and launch my IDE. So there's going to be several ways that you can connect to this PLC. The first one is going to be creating a new project. 
This will obviously overwrite the program that's currently running on the PLC. And in most instances, when you're connecting to a PLC for the first time, you want to retrieve what's currently running on the device. So what we're going to do is, since we don't have an existing project, we're going to select from upload. So from upload, we're going to then choose the PLC from the same driver that we had in RS Links expand the PLC. In certain instances, you do need to drill down and select the PLC at the lower level. And you'll notice that you can upload from the top level PLC, or you can go all the way down to this ethernet level and then select the PLC there. There's going to be certain cases where that is going to make a difference. In this case, I don't believe so. So we're going to press on upload. You'll receive a notice that there is currently no project file of that name found on the computer. So we're going to have to select a file, which is essentially going to be a new installation. So I'm going to select desktop. It's going to have me select desktop once again, select, and it should tell us that we're going to upload the project and save it under that specific name on the computer. If everything goes as expected, you should have uploaded the project and the processor should be in the position that it's currently in. You should be online with the controller. So if you click here, it will only allow you to go offline. Now, before I move on, I usually save this project one more time just to make sure that we upload the current tag values running on the PLC. Press on yes. And at this point, you can go into the ladder logic or structure text, whatever the language of choice might be, and view the programming of that specific PLC that you can now access. In any case, that's all we have for you for this short tutorial. If you have any questions, if you're stuck on connection problems, if you're dealing with a different controller than the one I'm showing you here, feel free to post in the forums with additional screenshots and information, and we will do our best to help you through.